Hey guys, I have received plenty of emails regarding NCLEX takers who are a little down about failing their NCLEX exam. And aside from encouraging and giving them my full emotional and mental support, I also explain to them my ideology about failures and tribulations in life in general. And that is, I believe in the quote that says, there is no such thing as failure, only lessons. Now, if we try to think about the regrets and disappointments as, as a result of failing, it will, will obviously have a huge effect on our mindset, right? And here's why the pressure and the shame produces anxiety. And we all know that anxiety affects our focus and the capacity of both our short and long-term memory. I'm talking about the synapses and neurons to build new connections in our brain. So basically, no matter how many times we go over notes, on a certain disease or medication, if we are not fully conscious and aware and have other things in our mind, right, then we tend to not recollect any of the concepts and and seem to not really understand the bigger picture of what we are studying. Now, relative to people taking the exam and have failed, and to those who have failed even multiple times, it can sometimes be depressing and heartbreaking, and I know that. It, it can be heartbreaking. Yet, if we react in a different mindset and look at the situation from a different angle and perspective, so basically we kind of reframe ourselves, right? In which we say that maybe failing the NCLEX was beneficial for our learning and our growth as a nurse in the future to make us a better nurse in general, right? Then it doesn't seem like a bad thing. I really do believe that the more times we take the NCLEX, the more proficient we are going to be as a future nurse. So just take a big deep breath and with that in mind let's start the review. On the last video we went over prioritization in relation to the topic of anti-anxiety drugs and the three subcategories being MAOI, TCA and SSRI. Now in this video let's talk about MAOIs. MAOIs or monoamine oxidase inhibitors act by inhibiting the activity of monoamine oxidase. Therefore, it prevents the breakdown of uh, monoamine neurotransmitters and thereby increasing their availability, which gives off positive effects on depression and anxiety. So let's simplify that. So basically, MAOIs helps balance certain brain chemicals, which is what we call neurotransmitters. And it does this by reducing the amount of monoamine oxidase which is basically the substance that breaks down the neurotransmitters. Hence, there would be more neurotransmitters in the brain, which helps decrease the symptoms of depression. So that's basically what MAOI does. Now, the two most important MAOI drugs that you might encounter in your NCLEX exam would include Parnate, which is tranilcypromine sulfate, and Nardole, which is phenylzine sulfate, so it's parnate and nardo. And the most common symptoms for these drug would include dizziness, dry mouth, and diarrhea, which is basically three Ds, and also weight gain. Now, as we learn from our psych class back in nursing school, we as nurses don't usually offer MAOI because of the lethal dietary and drug interactions, right? And this is the most important thing that we have to know for the NCLEX in regards with MAOI. And this is also a big reason why we they always say that MAOI is usually used as the last line of treatment and is used only when, let's say, other classes of antidepressant drugs, for example, SSRIs and TCAs have failed. So, in regards to food interactions, if you take MAOIs or if you give our patient MAOIs, we need to know for the NCLEX that our patient needs to limit foods that contain tyramine or high levels of tyramine, such as cheese, pickled foods, beer, and wine. So that's cheese, pickled foods, beer, and wine, right? Now, and here's why. Tyramine is an amino acid, and it basically helps regulate blood pressure. But if tyramine is combined with MAOIs, the interaction causes dangerously uh, high levels, severe high levels of 
blood pressure, which can then trigger a hypertensive crisis, and we don't want that in our patient. So again, the biggest tip we can take away from this video is to remember that when we're giving MAOIs to our patient, we need to avoid foods with high levels of tyramine, so no cheese, no pickles, no beer or wine, okay? Now, thank you so much for watching, and I wish you guys the very best on your NCLEX exam. To see more of the review, please visit www.allnursingnotes.com. That's allnursingnotes.com. And also, please take advantage of the audio review and the online courses in the website. Don't forget to study hard. Take in deep breaths every once in a while. And good luck, and God bless. See you guys again soon. Thank you.